do have Team Paradise's uh, LU here rocking th about three splash walls. I think that's going to be uh, uh, something to give Mayrays a very difficult time. So we do see them dropping here. We're going to be looking at how they're going to split one wall coming in to start initiating the defense for LSDJ. Uh, yep, so all, about... all three are going to come in over there from the right side, and they're all just going to get destroyed off the bat. That's three going down for Team Paradise, and Memories is going to kick this push off right away. So we do see Nakuro trying to uh, keep the support with the sniper there looking at the tower. It seems that they are going to be the first ones to push the tower, uh, starting at the 80-point mark, continuing down to the 70s. Uh, it seems Dude taking his time here trying to let the uh, Echo Locator run down because he's not actually running cold-blooded, which I find is something that a lot of people find is kind of a necessary thing to run when you're at a high-level play. Yeah, he's definitely wanting that Ink Saver main instead, and going to fall off the map right there. Paradise kind of getting rolled over right now. These three walls don't seem to be doing too much for them on this map, as every time a wall is up, a splat bomb is just getting thrown at it, and that's a dead member for Paradise every time. Yeah, I do think the verticality in this map does make it very difficult for the splash walls to be viable, but they seem to have decided to go with the three splash walls anyway. It seems that they are finally able to get the tower. Uh, starting to try and push it back now. I don't know how much memories, uh, how many of memories players were down at that point, but they are all back now. One down for Team Paradise as Dude is it trying to just hang around here. Yeah, Dude is going to be able to call out that flanker right there, but he does have to pop Kraken for that, and that's two specials being used for Paradise right away, and they're not going to be able to get too much of a push right now, as Nakura is going to be able to get that snipe on Dude as well. Okay, so that is two down now for Paradise. Nakura taking his time to guard that tower. Uh, oh, the tower did try to go, but it's back into neutral territory here. Uh, dude does see a person trying to come up on their level one, but the Luna Blaster is coming into the flank and is also going to take out that 52 gal cross. That, that was that was very that was that was very well coordinated by Memories right there, having want someone come up the front wall of snipe, distracting them, and then Cross being able to come up from behind. Dude able to get a kill on Cross just waiting right there. I don't know if Dude actually knew he was there, but that was a little questionable. I oh, don't know what, what to say whoa. about that. Dude, whoa, maybe what expecting are you doing? maybe expecting the tower to be moving f a bit faster than it was, but regardless, that is going to be allowed Memories to extend their lead even further right now. Okay, so we do see all oh, the dynamo does miss. Dude, Deacon right under there, trying to figure out where he wants to go at the top of the bottom, but not able to make that decision in time as the Luna is able to take him out, but does get killed in the process. They can yeah, do the push tower going down to the 15 point mark here. Uh, it's no just re really, really hard for Paradise to get back in here. It looks like they've got some type of control back as that is two of memories going down right there. So it looks like Dude's going to rush into mid, try to get this reclaimed before the tower gets back here, and maybe they can start getting a push off of that. Okay, so there we see uh, we got three of Paradise's members here kind of hanging around in the center, uh, trying to kind of maintain that front line, even though the tower is uh, neutral right now and it is trying to make its way back to the center. I guess they're just trying to play it very carefully despite the major lead that Memories does have. One minute, 40 seconds left on the clock. It looks like Dude was expecting Nakura to be on the normal snipe platform that he's been for most of the game, but instead Nakura's going to take up the more defensive position up on the large wall, and that's going to really shut down any hopes of Paradise had pushing right there. Yeah, I think them taking the defensive position is definitely the thing they want to be doing, especially with a 94 to a 10 point uh, major lead that they are holding right now, and they seem to have switched that to an offensive push again as the Luna Blaster Neo is able to take out Dude there relatively quickly. Yeah, it looks like Paradise and Memories just trading one for one right now, and Memories is going to just be perfectly happy to do that, and Nakura getting a pretty ridiculous snipe on Dude right there, just completely shutting Dude down this game. So we do see Nakura was rocking the Cold Blooded, but I don't think. Uh, that is going to be very necessary, considering that Team Paradise's LU doesn't really have much for Echo Locators, but despite they have 40 seconds left on the clock and they are still playing it very carefully, I think they would have to go and try and make a big push here. Trying to go big or go home, but Yugo missteps and does fall to the left side. Seeing Yugo, seeing Yugo and Dude both falling off the map this game, but it just... Paradise just really can't get in right now. There's ink all over their side of the map, and the Dynamo and Cross are just taking complete advantage of that right now. Three members down for Paradise, and they're not going to be able to get a push going here, and that's going to be game one to Memories for sure. 
but definitely you did see uh, Kit Kat going in there with the Dynamo very, very efficiently. Uh, very tough to do sometimes, but it seems that despite it is GG, dude tried That's... to go for that one kill there. What happened to start that game is all three all three walls for Paradise went into their zone area and were looking at approaching mid from there, but the snipe Nakura just had a good look on all of them and as the walls came down the splat bombs came over to answer them and after that Paradise just really couldn't get anything going from there. We see dude with the three and eleven score line just not able to do a whole lot that game. Yeah, that's definitely gotta be very daunting to have that kind of uh KD ratio. I think that does actually affect some of the players going into the future because uh, they'll initially be a little bit distraught that they get such a result and I feel that they let that really affect their play style coming on. Uh, but touching back with the walls that you were mentioning, yes, for sure. Um, getting those bombs over could actually, you know, pretty much boost the amount of hinder that they're applying to themselves with all the splash walls because there are some scenarios where when teams do have the splash walls, it can work against them. And a lot of these uh, scenarios are instigated when the opposing team does basically throw the bombs at the wall. Yeah, I think they're going to have to be a little bit more cautious with their walls and just be, yeah, just be more cautious with that and not get caught out by the splat bombs as much because that definitely ruined a lot of Paradise's momentum to start that game on. And on a map like Moray Towers, once Nakura got into a groove and no one was really able to get to him, he just locked down the middle of the map. But going into Raid Make Arowana Mall, I think this map's going to be a lot more favorable for Paradise's triple walls if they do decide to stay with that lineup. Big decisions have to come to play now if they are going to indeed keep that lineup or try to go with something different because they do need to consider that uh, the lineup for memories may most likely remain the same because I think we were mentioning uh, yesterday for Inkstorm that memories does have a very, very solid lineup and it really covers a lot of the general picks that are uh, put into the tournament. And basically, the, uh, the Dynamo, the Blaster, Yugos 52 pretty much covers nearly every kind of different scenario. They seem to have everything locked down no matter what. Yeah, Kit Kat with the Dynamo is just going to keep a lot of ink coverage down that allows Yugo and Cross to do that buddy tandem system going in and getting the back line for whatever team they're playing against. And Nakura just holds everything down that might get past Kit Kat. It's a so, very solid comp. Indeed it is, and we actually do see for Paradise his lineup they are dropping one wall having a uh, lsdj rock the uh the sniper here or the charger and we've got wolf rocking the luna uh maybe relying a little bit more on the sniper support and some cqc power but we're gonna have to find out as team paradise goes uh through the right choke point to try and approach that rainmaker but it seems memories are already on that bubble yeah, this just there's two members for Paradise right here, and they're not doing a whole lot. Both of them are just trapped and close right now, and it looks like they're trying to... Okay, one is finally going to jump out right there, and looking to get some type of advantage in mid. One is going to go down for them, so they're going to have to hold any thought of that. Yeah, to think that's definitely one of the things that they need to think about putting themselves in that choke point. They need to figure if the other team has already kind of placed themselves on those sniper perches because that really gives them a big advantage at being able to cover the middle here. But it seems that they are approaching their court as Kit Kat does go down, but Hugo does... Uh, sorry, uh, Dude also goes down by Nakura's sniper there at the middle. Memories, pushing it to 52. Yeah, 52 isn't really that great of a push on this map, and it looks like Paradise has been able to get back control of their area here, so it looks you have to see how they push back up in the mid, and with two of Memories down, it looks like they are going to be able to do just that, and Dude having Kraken very soon. You see Dude making a lot of mistakes here. He threw that splash wall, kind of just went right into the waters there. Yugo placing that wall, making it very difficult for him to be able to reach him and reach Nakura. The Kraken is going to be released, but the Kraken on... Memories is also going to be released, defending that Rainmaker and his own life in the process. Dude, evading down to the left, bottom climb right there. Yeah, just going to exchange special for special there, really, and it looks like Memories is going to get the advantage off of that. Two members of Paradise going down somewhere else. Dude, his patience is going to be rewarded, though, with that double kill, and he's going to try to take back control of mid of this area. Definitely, but two down now, Memories. It is now up to Dude to try and possibly either clear up the center or try and clear the court, but he's not able to do that in time as Cross's Luna is able to take him out, almost misplaces a step there, but is able to climb back up. The Killer Whale on behalf of Team Paradise probably going to cause a bit of difficulties for Memories as one of Memories players does go down. 
Will they take that Rainmaker back? Mm, not look, doesn't look like it yet. Both teams are just content to let that, that Rainmaker stay there for the moment until they have some type, some more, some more of an advantage, and just really just a stalemate right now. Dude, not knowing where Nakura is, is going to get sniped out right there, and he is going to drop Kraken off of that. But Paradise does have the Rainmaker, and they're just holding it back for the moment. But it looks like Memories is making a push forward. Yeah, I definitely think Dude trying to play a little bit more carefully here was definitely a. Uh instigated due to the ratio that he achieved in the last match, and I think he is letting that mentality get to him in this match, and they're not really able to go and instigate a push right away, and that's causing a lot of difficulties for them here, as Dude, still playing it carefully, playing uh, placing the splash wall at the end of the choke point here. It looks like Paradise, no, Paradise looked like they were going to get a little bit of a push, but Kit Kat, I mean... Luna there is able to shut them down very quickly. That stealth jump coming in for the Dynamo is going to get one kill. Doesn't look like it's going to get Dude though. And maybe some type of reset here, and it looks like Paradise may be able to finally push into Memory's area. So it seems they do have two down, and now here we go. This is the big push that Paradise is looking for. They are pushing right down to the center, and they are able to take the lead, putting it to the 44-point mark. Huge for Paradise. One yeah, that is... Five. That is going to be shut down very quickly for them, though, and it looks like how how much control they're able to keep right here is going to determine how much of a chance memory is has of coming back. Still do see it's 44 to 52. There's a lot of pressure being put on the choke point there. I'm not sure if that's the smartest play that memories could be making right now, but I do trying to stay back, playing it very carefully. Here comes the flank on the middle. I believe that was yes, it was indeed Hugo. They are able to pop that Raymaker. They're able to take three down from Paradise. Yeah, and that's going. This is a complete reversal right now. They are going to be able to take complete control of mid. Memories just needs one more wipe like that, and that will be past the 44 point mark. You go advancing into Paradise's area right here. Dude, trying to find sniff him out, but neither of them able to kill each other. Oh, Yugo finally goes down, but the Rainmaker has escaped to Paradise's close. Okay, so we do see the Rainmaker. Yes, indeed, you are correct that it is going to the choke point here. They are able to actually stop them, though, and that's the thing that I find. It's sometimes very risky to be pushing that Rainmaker down into the choke, but despite we do see Dude here having the Kraken ready, playing it very safe because that is what they should be doing with about 23 seconds left on the clock here. Paradise is just Paradise is just going to throw up walls here. Dude has his Kraken. They're not moving. They're just going to keep the Rainmaker right there, but Dude accidentally picks the Rainmaker up, so they're not going to have Kraken anymore. Could be a pro- wait, what? what? I'm confused. What? No, he- What happened? No, oh, he, I'm- he pick up the I Rainmaker. swear. Okay, my bad. <laughs> I, it looked like he picked okay. up the Rainmaker on my screen, but someone else did instead, and- Yeah. Yeah. All right, there we go. That's definitely the way that they should be playing it. That's the thing about Rainmaker that people don't really like sometimes, is that when it comes to those last 30 seconds, if that team just has the lead, it seems that they'll play a bit of that game of chicken, and I don't think that is something that's very sought upon for competitive play, but despite um, much better performance on behalf of Paradise, evening it out to 1-1. Yeah, we do see Nakura there with a great scoreline of 9-1, to one, but his his one death was right at the beginning. I'm trying to figure out where that was, if that might have been when Paradise pushed, but I don't think it was. But regardless, going into Splat Zone's Piranha Pit, what are your opinions on this map? How much have you played of it? Okay, so we actually did cover this about once or twice in yesterday's cast. Splat Zone's on Piranha Pit, very open map. I think that's going to be very beneficial for um, Team Memories cross using that dynamo roller can be very threatening especially on uh especially using it on a game mode that does rely on covering a lot of turf and using it on an open map it's like when you see a dynamo on mahi mahi resort it's something that most people find very threatening just because of the amount of turf that that thing is able to cover so i think that's going to serve very beneficial for memories but looking at the lu for paradise here dude trying to figure out what he's going to be rocking. It seems he picked the... Oh, oh, wow. This guy going there's, ballsy and picking the nozzle nose. There's no way. There's no way. Oh, what no. are you no. doing? There's no way. That's right. Get back on the 96 deco. That's there not how you go. Think. Yeah, okay. Dude confirmed ultimate troll. Despite. Wolf of the Luna Blaster. Ayazato with the 52. And LSDJ just keeping that charger. Yeah, we're going to have to really see who outgresses who on this map because it just really 
it seems like a lot of this map is focused on getting the opponent's zone from the streamers that we've seen, and it's just, it's really hard to do that with, it's just very, I think this is a great map. Uh, lots of offensive and defensive options. Okay, so we do see Dude here trying to go onto the right side, trying to challenge that other splash wall, but he's going to be the first to have his splash wall taken down here. Lots of offensive pressure from Memories on both sides here as they are able to... Seems, oh wow, it seems Mem uh, seems Paradise has actually been able to kind of make a break here on the right. Placing that splash wall very well on the ramp there, but it's going to be rising up, and they have secured all the spot zones as they are starting to push, using the Killer Whale very effectively. Placing the splash wall, trying to form a front there, and there is another Killer Whale. Very efficient on behalf of Paradise. Yeah, that's just two downs for Memories right now. It seems like it's just been two down consistently for them for the first part of the game. They're having to slowly work their way back in here with the Dynamo, but Dude with the 96 is going to be able to keep them out, and the Kraken being popped as well. Seeing if he can get hit that, and he indeed he does. Oh, wow. Fell for the bait right there from the Kura, using the Kraken right at the bottom. Wow. Yeah, very, pulling very pulling Dude beautiful. way away from the splash splat zone keeping them from really keeping any more points, but 56 is a pretty good starting point for Paradise, only about a minute and 15 seconds into this match. Two down, two are down now for Paradise, and we'll have to see, ooh, dude as well getting caught out, and this, yeah, Memory's able to take the zone off of that. Something that I just finally was able to note was that cross. I was initially saying, wow, his dynamo is gonna be very effective in this, but he actually has seemed to switch the Luna. So maybe that's nah, slightly causing difficulties for them? I'm not sure. Sure, but there uh, we see Duty's able to swap with Hugo, but Memories taking it right now as the counter is actually stopped by Paradise, 72 to 56. Par Paradise able to get Memory Zone right there off of a solo man push while Memories was able to extend a little bit too far. If Memories can, I mean, if Paradise can get both zones here and apply that penalty, that's going to help a ton, but it looks like they're, it is going to stabilize somewhat. And Dude getting caught out by that whale, not able to swim through the ink in time. Yeah, just not able to get the side in time as Hugo is able to push to the right there with the splash wall, making it very difficult for Paradise to maintain that zone as the zones are neutralized again for both teams. Uh, the Sprinkler, there it is, making it very difficult. But Dude, Trying to maintain a defense over the splash wall, but he's not able to do that as the Kraken is able to get him and he super jumps back to the spawn. Yeah, that super jump out though is going to mean that Paradise is going to be able to keep their zone, so not too much is going to happen from that. Memories just is going to need some type of push here without overextending. That is two of down from Paradise right now, and this might be the push. Dude able to trade right there is able to really just stop the aggression and it looks like just force Memories back as Memories does overextend a little bit and that is three down for them. Okay, so we do see that Paradise able to push forward here. Are they able to take back that zone? It doesn't seem like so. They are pinging for help here as two splash walls are approaching that zone. Sprinkler down. Do you playing cautiously? They are able to get both of the zones there, and that is going to be the penalty applied to Memories, making it this much harder to make a comeback in the last two minutes of this game. That is two down now for Paradise, but it's a member down for Memories as well, so it looks like we're going to be going to more back of a neutral situation right now. As we do have 1 minute 35 seconds left on the clock here, we do see that the Dynamo is trying to instigate a push as the Kraken is able to flank around. Again, Super jumps back to the spawn. I don't know if that's really favorable for them at this point in time because they do need to take care of that zone really fast, yeah, they, but jumping away is causing them a big problem. One minute, 20 seconds left. Yeah, they definitely need to make something that happened there. And Super jumping out when it, they think it was a 1v1 at that point really isn't the best idea as that just leaves that one member from Paradise able to just take control back of mid again. And we do see some splat bombs coming in here, and the whale is going to push some of Paradise out and get some kills. Maybe the zone here for Memories, that is another kill for Yugo, that's and that's three, three down. down for Paradise. That is three down for Paradise indeed. We do have 50 seconds left on the clock here, making it very difficult for them to be able to maintain that zone. And it looks like Memories has finally been able to push back here. Dude trying to fight from way back right now. He's not able to get into the zone area. We see him jumping and diving around. Looks like Paradise is able to neutralize the zone somewhat, but another going down for Paradise. That's two down for Memories though right now. We do see Yugo here. He's trying to flank from behind, placing the splash walls, making it very difficult. Both zones are controlled by Memories, but the counter has been stopped by Paradise. We've got 23 seconds left on the clock. 
What is going to happen? 33 second penalty on behalf of Paradise. They need to maintain their defense as much as possible if they want to be able to take this 2-1. Yeah, dude's just going to stay in the zone right now. Play defensive. That's another defensive whale coming out. Memories just needs this zone for five seconds. Kit Kat is going to be able to cap the zone for just a little bit. Is that going to be enough? Oh, it gets the Oh my god, no, it's not. It's going to be one second left. Yes, they're going to be able to take it. And they lost the lead at the oh final god. second. That is going to grant memories. Oh my god. They wanted the, the last Two second, dude. Yeah. They wanted the last second. Oh my gosh. That they wanted dynamo. the last what the? The, di the dynamo coverage doing so much dynamo for memories so much there right at the end. The dynamo oh. doing so much work for memories, and that's going to be what means the zone for them. We do see an 8-0 and scoreline coming out for one of memories members as well, just constantly alive and keeping control. Great, great fight put up by memories there for that comeback. Unbelievable. Yes, I am telling you indeed that the Dynamo is a huge threat on these open maps for sure, especially playing on Splat Zones, but we will be moving on to Port Mackerel Rainmaker. As we try and observe Paradise's lineup possibly changing, they are going back with the Going walls back to the triple three lanes on Port Mackerel sounds perfect for triple wall to me. Yeah, definitely here is... Uh... You're absolutely right. Having the three walls on Port Mackerel is something to definitely be afraid of, especially really any mode, to be honest. Just the map in general, it's really great. Uh, even on Splat Zones, trying to maintain defense for uh, the halls there, stopping them from getting to their zone, tower control. Also, it's on, just great. also on Port Mackerel here, that's going to be a... It's it's going to really shut down the effectiveness of that Dynamo with not as many open areas to paint. We'll have to see how Kit Kat deal with, deals with that. Okay, so we are getting on to the start of the match here. We do want to try and find out how they're going to be able to split and lay their defenses here as the splash balls do line up on the left, but both do go down and they do get the Raymaker to initiate the push here. Dude trying to take care of the Sprinkler and the Dynamo as that is kind of serves a distraction, but no, stop that by 84 points. Ooh, nice, taking the lead. Good kill by a dude there to get on the other side of Cross to prevent him from getting that kill. And another kill before Yugo's wall comes out. Yugo maybe being trying to be a little bit too aggressive right there. That is still not much of a push from Paradise. It doesn't seem like they were able to get to that killer, get to the Rainmaker, but that whale is going to pop the Rainmaker, see if they can get a push off of this. So they are getting the kills, and the Kraken is there to instigate another push, but the Rainmaker does unfortunately go down. Oh, is this Yugo going for the Deeks here as he's able to survive the Kraken, but Paradise will be able to take that Rainmaker back. Yeah, but they really need to push it through this section if they're actually go if this is going to be called a good push. 78 is not going to cut it, but they are going to finally be able to push just straight in. That crack in nowhere near the Rainmaker, and that's really going to allow Paradise to get to a very solid push of 39 on Port Mackerel. Yes, indeed it will, but I do see Nikura really likes to do that. Eh? He likes to use the Kraken, kind of just use it and then jump right back to spawn. I'm not sure, again, with the lead that they are getting, pushing it down to the 26, if that's the most viable thing to be doing, but they will lose the Rainmaker at the 22 point. Three and a half minutes to go, but I don't even think it's going to be reaching final time. No, it definitely won't be. Mem Memory's just going to be able to need to get Kip Keck back out in this open to reclaim their zone area. Dude, looking for this kill on Yugo, being very patient, and... Ends up oh. trading with him. No, not trading with him. Cross able to come in with the support, but he's also going to be taken down. That's three down for memories. Three down for memories indeed, putting them in a very good spot to be able to try and take that Rainmaker back. So they're going to finally get memories to drop that. Three minutes but left on the clock. The Rainmaker is up on that top right corner, though, so Paradise is not going to be getting up there anytime soon. That is just going to be memories. Memories Rainmaker while they try to get control of this area and right now this is really just turned into a zones game with the Rainmaker up in that corner. It uh, definitely is. You're definitely right to be bringing that up here. They do see that they had Nakura kind of pinned down there. Yugo trying to find a way to get through but somehow dies around the corner there. I'm not quite sure how that happened but Yugo will be down and we do see Dude trying to form a path to go for the win here. I, there's really no point to be doing that with the Rainmaker up in that corner. He's just preparing it for maybe way later in the match. That's a very interesting spot to be. He does end up trading with Yugo there. And that's two down for Memories, one down for Paradise. It's just Memories cannot get back into their zone area right now. We do see that as one down for Memories. Do trying to approach to the left side, but he is echolocated. And, and just remember, he does not have cold blooded on, so this might make it a little bit more difficult for him to do anything. But he's that still one. able to grab the kill on Yugo there. One clip just around the corner. Yugo not being far enough behind that wall is going to cost him. That splash wall on the splat. That splash bomb on the splat wall is going to take out Dude 
food and the bomb rush is also going to try to take control of this mid area and that is looks like memories is finally going to be able to take the rainmaker down in and finally just get some type of control back where they've been down about four minutes now with no control yes it definitely seems that, that way very much so um looking at that splash well there that is exactly how the splash well can, can kind of hinder the player sometimes if the opponent plays it just right, but it seems that Memories is going to be able to break away, and they lost the lead, bringing the Rainmaker to the 20 point. Dude, Memories. dude needed to be a little mo bit more active right, right there. He was just camping up, up in the Rainmaker with the Kraken ready, and he thought that was going to be enough as Three of Paradise was down, but Memories chooses to go to the other side. Dude, not ready for that, and the Rainmaker is just able to slip right by him. So Paradise is going to, is really desperate right now to get some type of offense pushed up. We see Dude way up in all of enemy ink. He's going to pop that Kraken, get one, Killer Whale on the Rainmaker. He's going to try to make a path for the Rainmaker to follow him right now. Here we go, going on to the right side. 45 seconds left on the clock. Dude seems to be supporting the left side instead. Will that be significant for them? No, but he's able to get a double kill, kill possibly. And kill the Rainmaker is Rainmaker. going, and the possible get dropped at the 12 point mark. Paradise taking the lead. 35 seconds to go. That Blitzkrieg push by Paradise was so good to get the lead. We got Rainmaker, Kraken, I mean, Killer Whale, Kraken, Killer Whale, Kraken, just being able to push up through Memories right there. And Memories was not ready for that very, very aggressive push. And they're going to have to make something happen in this last push that they have. It's just been back and forth as we've seen this entire match. We've got 10 seconds left on the clock here what is going to happen is memories going to be able to take this back i'm not sure but we got to deal with the crack and ready to stop them at any moment now he is going, going to pop that kill. crack and if he gets that kill this is over he's oh, not able to do it just real. yet the deep so real the jukes on the killer whale and the kraken but still is not able to escape paradise just all over memories right there and that's going to be two two Wow, unbelievable back and forth match there between Paradise and Memories. We really did think at the beginning it was just going to be it pretty much and Paradise was going to be one to take it, but Memories pushing twice. Memories got I think Memories got two wipes in a row right there pretty much and dude wanted wanted to just kill the Rainmaker with the Kraken waiting up there on the upper corner, but Memories instead going down the other side. I don't know if they knew that Dude was up there, but if they did, that was great. If they didn't, they got the 50-50 on what lane to go down, and they were able to take the lead, but Paradise just answering right back with that Blitzkrieg push. Very great stuff. Okay, so we do see here that we are moving on to TC. Camp Triggerfish, as both teams are up by two. This is a game, game five. five, and I'm not sure if it's a final. Does no, it this, is, this is game five. This is it. Whoever wins this goes on to winner's finals to face NST seats for that ticket to Grands. Definitely a match that none of you guys want to miss. Please, guys, if you are watching the stream, be sure to tweet everything you possibly can. Share the stream. Quote, Endgame TV won. All right, getting into this last map here. Ter Paradise is going to stick with this lineup still. D DJ going to the Kelp Splatter Scope. Maybe not thinking the E-Leader is too necessary on this map. I don't think Memories is going to be changing at all as they do just keep their consistent lineup. What do you think is going to happen here? Hmm. For ta uh, for, sorry. For Tower Control Camp Triggerfish, using the walls again, I'm not sure if that's going to be the most viable thing considering that they were having a little bit of difficulty with that on Moray. There are parts where the wall, or themselves for that fact, can kind of just throw themselves off the map. Uh, with Triggerfish, there are the waters that they're going to have to be able to uh, watch out for, but I'm sure if they play the cards right, they might be able to set a nice front line and possibly push that tower a little bit past the mesh. Something I do want to see here. I see Paradise do this a lot. They send two walls to the right to push through the opponent's zone. Tower control, I don't think that is as good, but we're going to see if they're going to send two walls to the right. It looks like just Dude going to the right here, so they're going to send three mids, see if they can hold that down while Dude gets the flank going. So what do you think about Dude trying to push to the right, actually? Do you think that flank is actually going to serve them as anything? Because it seems that he is having a little bit of trouble dealing with the person that is trying to ink right beyond the wall there, and we do see memories having a sniper on the ridge. Yeah, dude just waiting there. Looks like not helping his team. That is going to be two of Paradise going down in what was a 3v3 mid as the Dynamo was just flicking over that wall. A great snipe coming in there by Nikura, and this should be some type of push started by Memories. Okay, so Paradise trying to get things together again. They are all lined up on the center there, but Memories losing the tower. Dude going back to the right here. 
Yeah, they, he needs to go back to the right. There's just ink all over here. They do not want this right area to be covered when Memories finally does start that push. Because on this map, it's pretty easy, what if you're on the tower, to juke one side as the tower does go in between both lanes. If you have si control of one side, but you need to be able to kill that person on the tower, you need to have control of both sides so they can't juke everything. Yeah, it's definitely something that we do need to be looking for. For if you're going to be playing TC on Triggerfish, most, most for sure. Uh, it does seem that the tower is going to... That's uh, basically that's basically a full wipe for Paradise, and Memories really needs to get a push started, and it looks like they finally will be able to. Dude is going to lock down this right side, so he will be able to shoot at the tower when it comes by, but the Dynamo is going to push him away with that ink just falling everywhere. Yeah, I'd say Dude is kind of positioning himself pretty perfectly, actually, considering the scenario that they're currently in, but he does need to find a way to get rid of that dynamo from the shoulder. I don't know if that dynamo did actually go down or not. No, it did not, but now dude is going to go in for the kill, but unfortunately he does swap. That does look Kit like, Kat. I think that is going to be the double kill for Kit Kat and another person of Paradise going down somewhere else and Memories is going to be start the push here. Dude needs to get back to that right side ASAP. He needs to do something very quickly. That dynamo is able to make a return. I'm, I think they're going to be implementing the uh, super jump technique to be able to get themselves back there so fast, but Memories able to stop it at 66 as the dynamo is causing major problems for dude on the right. Yeah, but in the left lane, however, Paradise was able to win there, and they're just going to take the tower and run with it right now to really just force memories out of any offensive positions. It, that's a pretty good strategy to do. If you're falling behind in ink coverage, just take the tower if you can and make the opponents go to more defensive, and that disruptor is absolutely going to destroy dude right there. That's definitely something that's going to really, really make him struggle here because with the 96, we do know that uh, your mobility is really reduced using that kind of weapon. Uh, so the Disruptor will cause a lot of problems and he was not able to get the splash wall in time. But Memories continues to push past the 60, going to the 55, right up to the mesh where it seems that this My gosh. will be it for Paradise. Uh, this is a very good push on Triggerfish and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon unless... It looks like one member from Paradise able to get in on the right side there and able to kill the member from Memories on the wall. And it looks like the tower is going to somewhat reset here. What really caused that push to happen was the blaster finally deciding to go to the right side, take Dude out of there, force everybody down, every friend from Paradise down into that left lane. And Memories was really just able to chew up Paradise once they were all forced into the same area. Yeah, that's definitely where you see having a 2-2 two two split on either side is going to be really strong to try and stop any of those pushes that they make on the tower, but you're right, the disruptors were causing the major problem here. And Dude was struggling a little bit, but it seems that they're trying to fortify a line here on the front as Dude does have the Kraken ready for somebody that could possibly be approaching from the elbow on the left there. While he does have that Kraken ready, that is two members of Paradise going down and no one from memory is quite dying yet. And this Kraken, able to get one, but that's... That's not going to be enough right now, as Memories is just going to be able to have somewhat of a counter push right now. Nice kill on the splash wall there, able to get the two there, one on Yugo, one on Cross. As Paradise does have 50 seconds left on the clock to be able to make something happen, but no, Memories is going to be the one to take the tower again. Yeah, I mean, Paradise really just has had too much of a power play this game. Like, they've been in mid, but it's never felt like they've had complete control of it. Dude... Finally, it looks like maybe pushing down Memories mid lane and Paradise is able to get some type of push going on right now. Dude is going to need to advance much farther down if he's going to put pressure here. But it looks like Paradise was able to push down the left very easily. Memories is actually uh, having a tough time here trying to stop the tower from doing something. And he wow, Dude is actually going to be super jumping onto the tower here. we got three guys on the tower as they, they push to the They need to get it past that point. They need to get it past it. Oh my gosh. Wow, Paradise. Wiped, but pushing it to the 35 point mark here. Big for Paradise. We didn't I see. It. I think that might be it. I mean, this is going to be a very hard to push past 35 for memories all in one go. But oh my goodness. It looks like they're going to have most control of mid here because all of Paradise did go down the start. That is two more down there. Dude, it's very important that he doesn't die there, but the Echo is going to spot him out right now. And that's a. Where. 52 gal came from mid lane all the way around to kill dude that's you two go. more down for paradise the whale you is go. going to stop the tower though you go you are not doing this you go oh my goodness oh, the Yo, the they did it they, stopped they it. did it dude i i cannot believe this i cannot believe this they actually did it team paradise takes it dude i don't know if you guys i don't know if you guys caught it or like noted it but like at first like hope and i were like why is he jumping to the tower right 
but the the thing is, they, they they made such a gutsy call with 10 seconds left to say, hey, we just took down their sniper. We're going to actually put three people on it because the more people we put on the tower, the more it's going to speed up. And they took yeah, that opportunity. Was, they just they needed they needed that push right past thirty five, and it's like just go for it. Uh, like, yeah, they point. needed to go for it right there, and they went for it, and it paid off. But Indeed that, it is. I, no, you have to go big or go home at these points. Dude, I, I just I just think it really should be highlighted because like that's such a hard that's such a tough call to call like because you have everything on the line. It's game five. It's it, it guarantees whether you go to winners finals and get guaranteed a top four spot and like. That call in particular, with that little time left, whoever made that call, super good move on uh, Team Paradise's part. Yeah, that's definitely a call not every team would make, too. Yeah. I honestly wouldn't have expected like anybody to make that call. That was such a gutsy call. Uh,